This week on TGC News, M&P slides Vista and Ruger struggle, the economic impact of the gun industry, and a brand new Bluetooth optic system from SIG. TACPAC offers some of the highest quality firearms, EDC, and survival gear in a monthly package shipped right to your door. One month could be heavily focused on gun parts, the next on some sweet survival gear. They're always mixing it up and sending out stuff you will actually use. You now have three options for free items from them. Using TGC TQ will get you a free tourniquet. TGC Knife will get you a folding knife. And TGC Tool will get you a sweet pocket-sized multi-tool. To get your free item, punch in those codes over at TACPAC. Com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Before we get cracking, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that came out to the TGC panel in Dallas a couple weekends ago. You guys are absolutely incredible, and I cannot say thank you enough. Keep an eye out for a highlight reel video coming very soon. Now, the news. We've been away for a bit, so there are tons of things to catch up on. First up, something that got released during the NRA show. Faxon, most known for their affordable but solid quality barrels, has expanded their lineup and are now making aftermarket slides for the Smith & Wesson M&P. Normally, we see everyone jumping on the Glock slide bandwagon, but Faxon said, nay, we're doing something different. And now for something completely different. <laughs> they are launching with two different variations of the slide, the Patriot and the Hellfire. The basics across both are pretty simple. Both models are made from 17.4 stainless, coated in DLC, have serrations almost everywhere, and of course are cut to accept popular red dot optics like Trigicon, Vortex, and Burris options. They are also both cut to accept, oddly enough, Glock sights. <laughs> The Patriot is your kind of duty version with only a slight weight reduction cut into the top of the front of the slide, whereas the Hellfire has cuts all the way through on the top and front sides of the slide. I actually got a chance to put my hands on these at NRAM and I gotta say they're pretty solid out of the gate. One of the things they don't quite offer, but I think you guys should bug them about, is this crazy bluish color that was on display at the show. Price point on the standard DLC coded version starts at $499 for the Patriot and $525 for the Hellfire. I'm curious to see how this pans out for them. We certainly don't see as much customization for the M&P pistols as we do with Glocks, but maybe that is going to set Faxon apart. What do you guys think? If you have an M&P, is this something you would consider spending $500 on or would you go a different direction? Sound off in the comments below. And in not-so-struggle bus news... A website called HowMuch.net has taken data from the NSSF and made it into a much prettier graphic that breaks down the true economic impact of the gun industry by state as well as the amount of jobs in that state. I can almost guarantee you guys will be surprised by some of the data here. Let's start with the small end of things. Hawaii, Delaware, and Rhode Island are coming in with less than a billion dollars each in revenue. And because of that, there really aren't a ton of jobs in those states with none of the three having more than 600 gun industry jobs in total. On the top end of things, we have some more really interesting data. No surprise, Texas is leading the charge with 3.8 billion dollars in impact and over 24,000 jobs. But it is followed closely by one of the worst states for gun laws, California, at $3.64 billion in impact and over 22,000 jobs. I find it interesting that the number two state for the entire industry suffers from arguably some of the worst laws in the country. But they are not alone. The top 10 states in order from largest to smallest impact. Texas, California, Minnesota, Florida, Illinois, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, New York, and Ohio. Yes, that's right. Half of the top 10 are not exactly gun-friendly states. It makes you wonder how so much business is getting done, yet the laws don't seem to be getting any better for gun owners in those states. 
Honestly, the whole thing is really interesting to me. I really enjoy this sort of information. They also publish data on how much the overall impact was, and it's staggering. The impact from the gun industry in the US generated over $51 billion and over 310,000 jobs. Not only that, but it generated almost $7.5 billion in taxes. That is only the data from last year, guys. One year. Holy crap. That is a lot of dollars moving around. According to this NSSF data, the gun industry has grown over 169% in the last 10 years. That is outstanding. And speaking of growth, I want to know how many of you are new to guns within the last three years. Sound off in the comments if you didn't buy a gun until the last three years. And because this is the Gun Collective News and it's Monday, the struggle bus has to be here. The first passenger on the struggle bus this week is Ruger. I'm not going to pretend like I'm some sort of CNBC analyst, but what I can tell you is that they are a publicly traded company and therefore the shareholders have a big say in what happens at the company. Not long ago, the shareholders proposed that Ruger create a report discussing the risks of their business in terms of gun safety. I believe this is an effort to somehow get the gun industry to out itself as some kind of war demon as some on the other side of the fence would have you believe. The proposal at Ruger passed and they will now have to create that report. The CEO, Chris Kilroy, said that the shareholders have spoken, but they cannot force us to change our business and cannot change what Ruger is about and what we stand for. Interestingly enough, this is not an isolated thing. There is talk that the same thing will happen during Smith & Wesson's big shareholder meeting in the fall. The long and short of this is that gun manufacturers are now being forced into a fight that they largely have been silent on, and I'm not sure that that's a bad thing. When the bottom line starts to become impacted, maybe the fight will actually begin. And hopping on the struggle bus this week is an outdoor industry giant, Vista Outdoor, the holding company for brands like Federal, CCI, Savage, Stevens, and a whole bunch more. On May 1st, Vista announced a new strategic business transformation plan, aka we're getting ready to sell some stuff. I love how these big businesses just like soak their press releases in buzzwords before they let it out. <laughs> so much jargon. <laughs> anyway, the long and short of it is that Vista is looking to shed some of their key brands like Bell, Gyro, Blackburn, and a couple others that I've not heard of so that they can focus on their core product categories like ammunition. However, also included in the list of, hey, we might sell these, is Savage and Stevens. On the surface, this tells us that the other brands are dead weight and that they need to be sold off to maintain the core of the company. But I did hear a very interesting rumor about this move. There is potential that these brands are being sold off while they are still strong so that the money can be pumped into a struggling ammo side of the business. That is very interesting. There is no way anyone at Vista would ever come out and say something like that without it going through like 80 different channels and this approval, that approval. I have eight different bosses right now. Uh, beg your pardon? Eight bosses. Eight? Eight, Bob. So that means that when I make a mistake, I have eight different people coming by to tell me about it. But if that's anywhere near true, it would be very, very interesting. Like I said, I did hear rumors that Vista selling Savage was the result of anti-gun idiots getting their ear of the executives at Vista, but I don't personally believe that to be the case. When I asked Savage about this, they said that the brand is still strong and popular and that it's business as usual at Savage. They also added that there is no guarantee that the brand will actually sell and that they are simply exploring the option at the moment. Very, very, like I said, interesting all around, and I suppose, as always, that time will tell the truth. But wait, there's more! <laughs> yeah, I told you there was a ton of stuff to cover. SIG Electro Optics, a kind of branch of the big SIG, has been growing quite a bit over the last few years. It's kind of impressive to see them truly making impact on the industry. This new thing intends to do just that even more. During NRAM, they announced a new system called BDX, which stands for Ballistic Data Exchange. 
BDX is a system that utilizes Bluetooth to connect your scope and rangefinder to automatically deliver information between the two and give you a holdover point on the reticle of your optic. Being that this is Bluetooth, you can also integrate the Applied Ballistics slash SIG BDX app and set up a bunch of presets for your different rifles and ammo choices. The concept of having a range finding optic is not new, but as they told us at the press conference, they thought that other executions on that concept looked like a battleship mounted on top of a rifle. <laughs> they wanted to keep things slim and quite frankly, they did just that. These optics are not bigger than any of their other normal scopes. And here's the kicker. They didn't actually increase the pricing on the BDX stuff. MSRP on the Sierra 3 BDX with the Kilo 1400 rangefinder is only 839 bucks. I know that's not like super cheap, but in my opinion, it's a solid deal for the kind of capability that you get out of this system. At launch, estimated to be in July of this year, they will have four different range finders and four different scopes available with this new BDX system. Now, there are a metric ton more features as far as hold points, how many data points you can input, how it all works. It's very complex and there's a ton of information, but I wanted to keep this as short as possible for you guys. If you want to, go ahead and dig into that on their site. I would love to see more optic companies pushing things forward and really allowing the shooter to customize their setup and focus more on shooting than dialing the optic. This is very cool. Tactical Baby Gear offers some of the coolest diaper bags, baby carriers, and day packs for the mom and dad that love freedom. Whether it's the Deuce 2.0 diaper bag combo with the bottle and dump pouches, the Day Pack 3.0, or maybe just the Tactical Teddy, you are bound to find something that works for you and your tactical baby. Also available are the new bulletproof panels that are level 3A Kevlar soft panels that fit inside either the backpack or diaper bag. To get squared away and get 10% off your order, use the code TGC10 at tacticalbabygear.com. And of course, it is time again for Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions. This week's questions are coming from the TGC Nation Facebook group, which you should totally join. There's a link below. And our first question is from Jacob Becker. He says, what is your favorite sci-fi video game movie gun that's out there? That's easy. The BFG from Doom, hands down. That is still one of the coolest guns in a game or movie that I've ever seen. Next up, Hunter Hatchie says, where do you see Remington in five to 10 years? Well, if they continue on the current path, they will be closed. However, I think someone would buy the brand before that actually happens and hopefully fix it along the way. They need a lot of help. Xander Devereaux says, how do you feel about ankle carry? Is it a viable option in today's market? For me, no, it's a no-go. I get that for some people it's an option if they can't or don't want to have something on their waistband, but I can't think of a situation where I would want to put a gun on my ankle, especially since I've never trained that way at all and don't plan to. My friendly fire question to you guys this week, with the weather getting warmer and competition season starting up nationwide, how many of you will go out and shoot a match at least once this year? I'm really curious to see how many competitors or competition curious people we have in the audience of TGC. And hey, if you want to ask a friendly fire question, send that to me on the Gun Collective Instagram. And guys, that is it for this week's show. If you didn't like it, hit that button. If you did like it, hit like, get subscribed, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description. We, of course, have a new Amazon affiliate store, as well as a link to purchase cool shirts just like this one. And of course, links to find us all over your favorite social media platforms. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's video on The Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.